Good morning. It's Tuesday. It's 9 a.m. It's day two of the Daytron Digital Experience Days. And today we're going five axes. Hi, again, I'm Mark. Um, like I said, we're going five axes today. So if you know Daytron a little better, you know we do have five axis machines. We have the D5 for dental applications. We have the C5 for jewelry and um, like medical industry uh, applications. So very small parts. Um, today we're looking at upgrading gantry machines. We have an, an M8 cube here with a breakout table and an additional trunnion. So an additional fourth and fifth axis. So it's basically an add-on. It sits in this breakout. Um, there's just there's just like four bolts to mount it on the table, and we can adapt different clamping um, devices, like a centric vise in this case, on the on the machine. If we're talking about five-axis machining, there's always a difference between um, doing simultaneous work, so all axes are interpolating together or indexing movements. So we're doing a movement first, like a pre-positioning in a different tilt angle or rotation angle, and then doing just a simple 3D or 3-axis movement. Most of the time, I would say like 90-95% of the time, um, you will use the trunnion for indexing parts. If we go over to this table, I've prepared a few, a few sample parts. Um, so the motor block, this engine block that we have, the scale model of this, um, it's actually a perfect sample of an indexing part with a few simultaneous movements. So we have two setups. Setup one was done all of the inside and these outside surfaces. Then we flip it over uh, just like we had it in the machine and then we can orient the part in each and every angle also the side pockets and holes and threads. So that's actually a great sample for five axis movement. So indexing, going in a position and then making a three axis movement. Simultaneous, all axes are moving together. I've prepared this little part so we can see how to make different facets and like different angles, tilting angles, you see all the freedom spaces of the, um, of the trunnion. And if we get a closer look at this part, it's a sneak peek for Friday's session. If you want to see and learn how to make this mirror surfaces here, hope we can get it on camera, yeah, looks good. Um, you should join in on Friday where we're going to look at different tool types and this particular face was done with, a, with an MCD tool, with a monocrystalline diamond tool. All right, we go over to the machine. Take this part out. And put this block in. Now it does not matter where I put my origin, my workpiece origin. Uh, so, and that's really the good thing about this. So it has like a like a little RTCP control. I can put my origin wherever I want on the part, just like on three axes. Because on some um, CNC systems, it's it's necessary that you put your programming origin in the center of the rotation axis, so of the C axis and the and the A axis, the swiveling axis. Later on, we're going to see the degrees of freedom that we have on the trunnion. So all I'm doing now is I'm using my, my camera to, to orient the part and taking the origin. So I just hover over, zoom in and probe my part. So the 3D probe will simply touch the part off.
and put the origin on top. Going to load this program and now we're going to have a little bit of milling. Once more, if you joined in yesterday, we saw the tool assist on the ML cube. Here we got the M8 cube, same principle, same size of the box. Um, so all of the tools are stored outside. We're gonna, we're gonna pre-machine, do the roughing cuts now with a long insert cutting tool. Now it's pre-machining this little this little dome and and sort of pyramid shape. And now we're doing the first indexing positions. So we're going in a specific angle. So we got a 30, no, 25 degree angle here. The rotation clearance of the C-axis would be 230 millimeters. So in general, we often get the question, uh, what's, the, what's the biggest size of a part um, that we can hold? And the answer is most of the time that it, it completely depends on in which angle you have to machine the part. Um, so do you have to rotate completely 90 degree down or do you have to, um, do you only have to tilt it like maybe 20, 30 degree? Uh, so there is no general rule of thumb um, that would make it. All right, next tool comes in. Which will do drill holes from different angles. So it spins the part a hundred and 180 degree from each side. Finishes it off. And on the last operation, we're gonna see very cool simultaneous movement. If you have any questions about this and about the programming or if it would be interesting for you um, to see how do you set up your workpiece origin in CAM as well, just let us know. There is a, a chat box in this window. Um, so just feel free to ask your questions there uh, and we're more than willing to answer them. If we can't make it in this live session, uh, we'll do it later on. So we're about to finish this part now. It's 
like on one of the last passes. Now doing this little taper. And here we go. So part is, part is finished. I um, wanna, wanna show you a little bit about the, about the, um, the clamping system itself. So we have um, kind of a big vise mounted here, a centering vise. Um, but in general, there is, a, there is a pneumatic valve that I can just open and close. So I can take the entire zero point clamping out. So I do have my, my, um, my clamping bolt here and two little pins for the orientation. And depending on your application, you can make your, your own base plates. If we take a close look at this. Um, this is the calibration tool. Uh, so we have this little uh, calibration sphere on top and you see this is gonna be directly mounted um, on the on the C axis again, we have this this bolt here and the orientation pin for the the 90 degree uh, parallel perpendicular orientation. All right, it does not have to be five axis all the time. So um, thinking a little bit outside of the box, if you look at a part like this, um, this could be done in three axis. But if we take a closer look. It does have these little, um, like two threads and a hole. From this side we got two threads and the same thing from the other side again. So in fact it's a five axis or five side operation. So this could be all done in one setup. At the end there is a, a technique, it's called the tap, leaving tap technique. Um, so you can just break the parts out. We have one part mounted here. It's a it's a, a ski binding for a tour ski for a touring ski. So this is the final part. It's like a prototyping kind of thing. Hope oh, you can see this. And what I did um, when we machined this was we just left two taps on the bottom, so we can easily break it out. And even if I just knock on the table, you can you can see how it's how it's like vibrating. So there is a little little bit of rest material standing, and it can easily break the part out. So I can machine this part completely in just one setup. What I'm saying, it doesn't have to be always five axis. This part was done on the fourth axis, so just a rotation um, axis. Same as other, um, other examples here, like this housing for an LED, uh, for an LED bike lamp, or an endoscopy camera housing. See this? Get a little closer. So we have multiple side operation. We have a big recess area there. And how a fourth axis looks on the machine, we can see over here at our our Daytron Neo, which is currently uh, doing a very a very cool job. Um, let me put the feed rate a little bit up. Um, so it's actually finishing this a gear selector um, shank uh, that was done by our our um, fellow students from the from the from the local university here and the Formula student uh, race team. So that's actually a part that goes into a race car, uh, and we're currently finishing one of those shanks um, on the machine here. So we're doing simultaneous work on the fourth axis as well. You see very high dynamic movement. Alright, so I think that was a little bit of a good insight of multi-axis on Daytron machining systems. Um, you don't have to fear multiple axes or five axes. Um, I know most of the time it can be a little bit intimidating um, to work with it. It's the same for us. Um, 
but in fact it gives you more degrees of freedom, more possibilities to do one part from multiple sides just in one setup. Um, I think we're gonna, gonna come deeper and get deeper into this kind of technology uh, now that it comes with Datron Next. Um, so it was a, a, little, a little bit of an insight now and I hope it was very informative for you. Don't miss tomorrow when we're looking at automation. So we will have different automation solutions um, on an M8 cube with different automatic doors, with a handling system, with a robot. Um, that's going to be exciting. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you tomorrow.